Mary. Mary, if you want to take on over, uh, she's going to cover bringing ChatGPT to your enterprise resource planning with Power Automate. All right. Thanks. We can see. There we go. <laughs> there we yep, go. Now we can hear you. <laughs> yep, I was trying to say hello. Yeah, thanks everyone. Um, great session there, Norm. So today we're going to talk about chat GPT for your enterprise resource planning. And that'll make a little bit more sense as we get going here. So first and foremost, let's talk about what we're going to talk about. So let me find my little thing here. Okay, first, our agenda. This is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to first talk about what it's like to create a custom connector for chat GPT inside of Power Automate, right? So that would be, you know, using that as a connector. So if we're familiar with Power Automate, that means we can take data or essentially a prompt, right? Create some type of in an app or in a flow, um, you know, some type of response that we then want to run through like a traditional chat GPT. So you can create a custom connector for that. Um, we're going to look at how to use that in a flow. And then we're also going to briefly talk about um, Azure OpenAI, but I do have another like slight modification that I found out prior to this um, session. And we're also going to take a look at um, the new Power Automate connector inside of ChatGPT, right? So I think that'll be a super cool demo that we will get here to quickly. So. Um, for any of those that don't know me, my name is Mary Myers. I'm so excited to be here today. Thanks for having me. I got started in the tech space not that terribly long ago in 2018. Prior to that, I was like a super end user in FNL, which is where my ERP or enter enterprise resource planning experience comes from. Um, and so I've got um, my my background comes from like that dynamic side of things, but then became super obsessed with the Power Platform after going through an app in the day um, scenario and realized how much we could do to automate and integrate our processes with Dynamics. So that's what I became super obsessed with. And then I'm also a Microsoft MVP. And then over the course of the years, right, I went kind of from like this app in a day to now I um, run my own company creating apps and solutions all day long. So I have a lot of fun. That's what I say, basically. All right. Um, OK, so this is what we're going to talk about today. So first, let's discuss what it would mean to create a custom connector for chat GPT inside of Power Automate. Let's talk about why, right? So what does that mean first? Um, the reason we need to do that is if you, excuse me, go and search for your list of connectors inside of Power Automate, you're not going to see a chat GPT one there, right? That means that we have to create a custom connector for it so that we can use it inside of Power Automate. There are a couple of things that we need to go ahead and have established first. So the first thing is, is that you need to have um, like the $20 account. So you have to have an upgraded chat GPT account. And then you also need to have this uh, developer account. So if you go to this platform account and I just threw like 20 bucks, um, you just have to have some type of like credit on that account as well, right? Because whenever you these API calls, unfortunately, I will say like they are not free. There is a very small charge for them um depending on like kind of what application you put them in but for me when i'm testing like i don't know i've not had very much usage on it so it's not that much but you do have to have some of you know the, some of those requirements set up ahead of time so that essentially you can get your api ready for use to create a custom connector inside of this um sorry inside of power automate so these are the requirements that you start with then um, I think this is probably part of what April was talking about is that there's a, this new screen um, for Power Apps because then I jump over to make.powerapps.com and so that I can create my custom connector inside of there. And I couldn't find it at first. I was like, I don't know where are their connectors? They're not where I'm used to them being. And then I went, there's like this show all. So when you go to show all, you're going to see this new application and then you're going to see custom connectors. Um, do I have a little? Yeah. Then I'm going to see custom connectors, you know, right in here. And then I went ahead and like pinned this to my dashboard as well in Power Automate and in Power Apps so that now I don't have to like always go to the screen to search for my custom connectors. 
So that's what you'll, you will start out with to start to create your flow. I'm sorry, your custom connector. And then let's see, um, I wonder if I can, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna walk through these are the screens and I've got some links and I think David's gonna share them. Um because I won't say that this is it's not the hardest thing, but it's also not the simplest thing. And it's definitely not something that we can walk through in like a super simple time. So I'm gonna do a high level talk about this, but there are some super great documents um online and some links that we're going to drop here for y'all to use. And then if you've not checked out Anders, um Jensen, Jensen, I'm not sure if I'm butchering his last name, but he's phenomenal. And he's got a really, really great YouTube video that gives some good documentation that'll help you create this chat GPT custom connector as well. But basically the first step whenever you're creating a custom connector is to what I'll call brand it, right? So what did I do? I went online, um, I Google chat GPT icon white, right? And then I put that on there and then you can see I've got like this little hex code. And so this is, this is the little icon that I have here. Then we have to put our host URL down here as well. And that will be um, listed on the documents in the links as well. But I think it's, what do I have here? It's open, um, yeah, openai.com, https platform.openai.com. And so that's what we put in the first screen there, right? That's just kind of getting it ready, getting it branded is what I like to call it. The next step whenever you're creating a custom connector is to add authentication, right? So if you're not familiar with authentication, that's like, what are your credentials? What are the username you know, credentials that you need to be able to use this API key? And that's just the same thing like if you're using like Dataverse or Business Central or anything else, right? You need to have a username credentials and that has some associated security stuff on it. So the chat GPT API, right, has a security set up on it as well. So we have to indicate that, um, that it's an API key here, like we have listed. And then we're also gonna identify where we're gonna have that um, authentication or that API key listed which will be in the header there. So then after we've created that, now we're ready to like create the, what's called the definition of the API. What's the definition? So if you're familiar to Postman, right? A definition would be like, if I'm going to post an API, if I'm going to post, I'm going to update, I'm going to create, right? Any of those types of things where I'm gonna pass in some parameters, I'm going to put in the customer name, but first I have that like JSON body, right, that you're having to work with. That's a definition, right? So if that's, you know, your familiarity set, think of that as the definition, right? That's what you're going to put in there because you're going to say, oh, this API can post. Let me put it in a pretty wrapper. That's all the definition is there. Now, let's say your experience isn't, right, from, from that perspective. Um, and you are just a straight maker from Power Automate. A definition is just going to be those actions that you can do inside of Power Automate. So SharePoint, right? That's a nice, easy connector that we're all, you know, familiar with. When you say, you know, create item, and it gives you those different fields that are available for whenever you're going to create an item, that is a definition. Right. So so it's nothing to be scared about. I think that a lot of times people are like, oh, custom, custom connector, custom this. And, you know, to Norm's point, right, if we just have like a little patience and a little gumption and say, OK, it's really not that bad. Right. It's just this is this is how we make the things relevant to what we already know, because I'm telling you that this skill set is nothing that anyone here can actually do. It's just how do I how do I know the name for this? So that's all the definition is. So you will set up that definition. You hit this import sequence here and it asks you um, what the URL is. And then a lot of times when you go to the uh, platform open API documentation um, references there. Sorry, I'm looking at my API over here, but I get so tongue tied um, over there. Th this link that we're going to share with you, whenever you go there, it gives you like the JSON um documentation right so you just copy and paste that you just have like this little header request that you throw in there and and you set that up so you set up your definition so you so we branded it 
Then we said our security for it. Then we created our definition. And then the last thing, oops, redo as we go back to grab our slides. Okay. <laughs> is we have this is we're going to test it right so we, we're doing all of that now we're going to test it and you're going to add first you're going to add a connection to it so you'll add like this new connection um and then it will do like those normal credential logins right that you're used to seeing like with every other connector that you have right with some type of username and password for that so that's what it's going to ask you for there except there you will enter your api key that you get from chat GPT, right? You go in there and you set up your, um, I call it developer account. Um, and basically, right, this is kind of common if you're used to using these other external APIs, they usually have an external, they usually have some type of developer site where you go and you, you get an API key that's associated for your user account. And then that's what you put in there. So you have these credentials. So then you test that and then your flow is ready to go. Now you've, now you've created this connector, right? And so, like I said, I know that that's a lot, but there's a, Anders Jensen creates this, like has this video. I think the whole video is 12 minutes long. He's more efficient than I am um, as far as explaining. And so I highly recommend you check that out if you want to create a little custom connector there. Now, what I decided, I was like, cool, I definitely want to use this in a flow. And because I am what I will call an ERP junkie, right? Like I just love to automate these processes. So I was like, cool, I want to take some of my business central data and run it through chat GPT and have it do like some forecasting and analysis. And I was like, that's gonna be so exciting. I'm so excited to do this. And so I spent all this time, um, you know, I spent probably like 30, 45 minutes creating my little custom connector. And then I was like, ready to go. And then I was like, wait, well, first I'm saying, I was like, wait, there's an issue with this because this is what we call something like responsible, you know, AI. And I realized that in my business case scenario for my for this connector, like how I would normally use it, I didn't want to send what I will call private or, or ERP data through chat GPT, which is this open AI source, right? Because then like, let's say for me, it's just test data. But like, let's say this was like maybe one of my customers, like super, super private, hot, like customer list that they don't want anyone to get, right? And I'm now like saying, okay, take all of their customer financial data and let's throw that out into the internet. And I was like, that's that's not a good idea. That's a terrible idea actually. So I had to then actually reshift the way that I was going to use this for my ERP scenario. So I say chat GPT for ERP, honestly, with like this asterisk, and some and some warning labels. And I realized that after I was like gun ho excited going down the lane there. Um, so what I decided to do instead was use chat GPT when I was like, okay, well, I know that one of the things that my you know customers often have issues with is like, how do I do this in business central? Like I don't, I don't remember, right? How do I post a journal? How do I, you know, reverse a payment, right? Like that type of same scenario, like we kind of forget. So I was like, okay, let me just see a safe way because all of that documentation is, is freely available online, right? That's our learn documentation. There's tons of blogs. There's tons of, you know, what I would call external facing, not customer client, you know, credential information um, that I can have it go out there and get. So I, I kind of put this, this like little screen inside Business Central that said, okay, I can ask you know, my chat GPT information from, from here, from inside Business Central, and then post that to like a Teams message. So that was the route that I ended up kind of deciding to, to go upon so that we could be what I would call like responsibly safe with AI. And this results back to kind of the scenario that we call, you know, just because you can doesn't mean that you should. Could I have taken this instead of just putting some type of question? Could I have ran my customer data, you know, through here and essentially ran, you know, an entire table? It, that would be the same as like saying, okay, I've got this table. I could copy and paste that table and put it right into chat GPT, right? And say, do magic, tell me something, right? And it would, but then I would expose all of that data. So this is, like I said, a scenario where I say, just because you can doesn't mean you, I'm not sharing my screen anymore. Have I never been sharing my screen? 
No, you were sharing. I, th I think something something happened. Okay. Uh, okay. Looks on my hand. But we are no wrapping problem. into the to the next demo time yep. if you are able to. There yep. we go. We'll go ahead and just stop it there then. Um, yep, we're good to go. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Mary. And and by the way, everybody, Mary was getting all this set up and the demo demons crashed into her house last night and uh, some of her demo was not working perfectly. So she backed up to uh, slides and it was fantastic. So thank you, Mary, for being a trooper and still uh, charging through that. You rock. Really appreciate it. Mm -hmm.